Le Chatelier's principle, when a system is at equilibrium and some sort of stress ap is applied to that system at equilibrium, the system itself will shift either left or right to try and reduce that stress. The only three stresses that are changed in equilibrium are pressure, concentrations, and temperature. Stresses from increasing pressure. If the pressure on a system at equilibrium is increased, then the system will shift towards the side that favors fewer moles of gas to reduce that stress. This will not change the value of K. For example, here is the Hebert process. One nitrogen, three hydrogens produces two ammonia gases. Here on this side, I have four moles of gas. Here I have two moles of gas. So if I increase the pressure, let's say I do this by decreasing its volume, increase the pressure, I squeeze it, if you will, then it's going to shift to the side where there's less gas, which is over here, two compared to four. And if I'm shifting in this direction, that means I'm producing more ammonia, here's all my ammonias, and less hydrogen and nitrogen. So the concentration of nitrogen and hydrogen go down, the concentration of ammonia goes up. If I decrease the pressure, then it's going to shift to the side where there's more moles of gas. For example, if I take the volume and I increase the volume, that'll decrease the pressure. Then it's going to want to try and fill that extra space here with more gas. So I'm going to shift to the side that has more gas. Here's one plus three, which is four moles of gas compared to two moles of gas. And if I'm shifting in this direction, that means that I'm going to produce more nitrogen and more hydrogen, and my concentration of ammonia goes down. So there's more hydrogen, more nitrogen, and less ammonia. <clears throat> if I increase concentration of one of the species in an equilibrium system, then the equilibrium will shift to try to reduce that stress. This will not change the value of K once again. So let's say I have a system that's at equilibrium and I add ammonia to it. So if I add ammonia, now I have too much ammonia and so this reaction will want to shift towards the left to try and produce more nitrogen gas and more hydrogen gas. So I will shift towards the left producing more of nitrogen, more of hydrogen, trying to reduce my amount of ammonia. If I decrease the concentration, then it's going to shift to the side to try and produce some more of it. So once again, I've got the Hebert process here at equilibrium. Let's say I remove some ammonia. I take some ammonia out. Then this reaction is going to shift towards the right to try and produce more ammonia to get back to equilibrium. Which means if I'm shifting towards the right, I'm going to decrease the amount of nitrogen and hydrogen, increase the amount of ammonia. Stressing by changing the temperature. This is the only stress that changes the equilibrium constant. Temperature is the only thing that can change the value of K. Notice that the Hebert process has the word heat on the right-hand side. That means that this is an exothermic reaction. So if I take this system and I cool it down, I put it in the freezer, let's say, then this reaction is going to want to shift to the right to produce more heat. If I add heat to this reaction, it's going to treat it like a product. If I add heat, I'm going to shift to the left to try and decrease that amount of heat. Now, <clears throat> if I increase my, uh, or if I decrease the temperature and make it cold, and it shifts in this direction to produce more heat, then my K value, since I'm going towards the right, is getting larger. If I add heat, this is going to shift to the left, where my k value gets to the left smaller. 